I mean, you're one of the biggest retailers out there. That's, mm -hmm. that's hard. Ouch. Bad figures. Well, I think we've got to take a couple of things out of this. Firstly, the, the headline number has been uh, inflated in terms of that loss because we took action now to restructure the company, including the closures that were talked about. So if you strip out the one-off one -off, uh, extraordinary costs, which is you know, a sign that we're actually doing something, then we're down, uh, admittedly, still about 16%. Um, but I think what we're also seeing at the same time is a shift in spending and some opportunities. And today we've announced a series of partnerships, including things like digital beauty services. Uh, we're putting gyms into the, into the space. So there's an enormous amount of activity going on. And to some extent, what you're seeing out of the, the last year's numbers is the rear view mirror. What's actually much more interesting is, despite the difficult general environment, what can you do to run your own business going forward? And we're fully engaged on that. 16% is still, yeah. as you say, as you admit, not ideal. Um, huge amount of investment has got to be made, hasn't it? If you've got two stores closing, but eight possibly further in the pipeline. Yeah, that's out of 170, and it's important to stress that we have uh, only one store at the moment that, that doesn't sort of fully cover its head office costs. So actually the overall business is also still generating cash. We've got net, net debt is sort of flat, and we've got, unusually for a retailer, we've got a pension surplus. So we've actually in, got a good balance sheet. The board has decided to keep paying the dividend because we believe in the future. And the key now is to follow where the money is going, because although the, there's a flatlining going on, which you've just talked about, Actually, spend is switching. So beauty is growing, uh, gifting is growing, and we're also seeing food growing, all of which, as a broad department store, as opposed to a single clothing retailer, we've got a lot more in the way of options, but and that's what we're after. In terms of those stores mm -hmm. and the potential closes, we heard from Hargreaves Lansdowne today saying you guys had the flexibility, to quote them, of a super tanker because you've got these incredibly long leases, and that's a big problem for you, especially if we see business rates going up. Well, I think you can, you can look at it two ways. Yeah, you've got long leases, but you've also got to look at what rent you're paying. And most of these places were anchor tenants. One of the reasons why we don't have loss-making stores is we're not paying incredibly high rents. In fact, a lot of the single brand retailers are wanting to move into department stores to avoid the rent and rates issue precisely. So we've got, we, we think we've got a great set of stores and particularly a key f top 40 stores that are very profitable. But having said that, it's tough out there. The market's incredibly competitive. We've seen wages are down mm -hmm. and people aren't spending. Well, I think the, the thing is that they are continuing to spend in certain categories. The, the trick of retailing is, you know, fr frankly, rather boring. It's to sell what people want to buy. And we have to adapt and change. The top line is not going to grow very much. But underneath that, you can generate a huge amount of opportunity. So we're seeing good growth in things like beauty. We're the leading makeup seller in the UK. We need to work out how to make it more appealing and particularly more experience appealing to, to our customers. Okay, really good to talk to you, Sir Ian Cheshire. Thanks very much.